her proselyte baptism started with circumcision, then they washed in water. If the circumcision is spiritual, so is the baptism. Buried with him in baptism. That is a spiritual baptism, not a literal baptism. Baptism is blood. Our hearts are sprinkled. Besides that, they didn't bury six feet under. You don't say buried with him in baptism. Jesus was buried in the side of a, in a sepulcher, in a tomb. You'd have to dip a man sideways. If you're going to show Christ's baptism. Wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you, Colossian, Gentile church that would have been in darkness in the ancient world, but now you've been brought to the light, the kingdom of light. You being dead in your sins in the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him. He said you're uncircumcised, but your hearts are circumcised. That makes you spiritual Jews having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of rituals. Which one of these handwritings we've been talking about you think is blotted out? Now, let me ask that question again. It was certainly the handwriting that was written on tables of stone. What Jesus did when he was nailed to the cross, he blotted out that covenant. He blotted out the Old Testament, the old last will and testament. Boy, that was, that's an all-night affair to get into that, isn't it? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He blotted out one handwriting. There's two handwritings. And which one did he blot out? Old Testament. Tables of stone. Now he's got it written in tables of, fleshy tables of the heart. And that's more binding than it was in the Old Testament. Maybe they couldn't see the law over there. Now God has it as a witness and a testimony in your heart. In my heart. And that is where he writes in our hearts. He binds Satan and casts out devils and the kingdom of God is coming to us. And that is the killing. That's not a thousand years after this is over. That's the two thousand years right now. Now, how does this all end? Well, let me just go ahead and I, like, I need to read the rest of this. He says, since the handwriting of ordinances are blotted out, to you Colossian Gentile spiritual Israel because you wouldn't be circumcised if you're not spiritual Israel and you wouldn't be the house of God which is the inner sanctuary which is spiritual Israel and you wouldn't be the veil and you wouldn't which is the flesh which is the bread which is the body which is the church you wouldn't be the veil and you wouldn't be the you wouldn't be the table of showbread we being many of one bread and you wouldn't be the seven candlesticks in Revelation 1 and 20 if and you wouldn't be the the altar of incense, which is the prayers of the saints, and you wouldn't be the house of God, which is the inner sanctuary, if you weren't spiritual Jews, would you? But he said, all the rituals are blotted out. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink of the Jews. Or any holy days of the Jews, or new moons of the Jews, or Sabbath days of the Jews. Because the Sabbath is every day now. And they all were a shadow of things to come, but the church. It says body, but the body's the church, isn't it? In Colossians 118 and 124. But the which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is Christ. The church is Christ, and he says in Colossians 127, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the mystery and that's been hidden through the ages, from verse 26. The mystery was hidden through the ages and from generations. And now is made manifest to his saints to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is the church among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The king is living in you. And that's the kingdom. Now, let's go back over here to Revelation 20. And how does this all end? It begins with the binding of Satan, doesn't it? What if I said the binding of self? And locking self away in the place of no knowledge. Does self have any knowledge of God? No. Self wants self. Self has to die. That's what the daily cross is for. Self has to be annihilated. Yeah.
That is. That's light. That's right. That's right. When he says, let there be light, it it's, equates the same way the earth, in, the, in Genesis, the first chapter, is a picture of us, the elect. It's created in innocence, and then darkness comes in. When Satan is cast in, Satan comes into our hearts and our lives. That's a real good picture of Satan. The earth is innocent in Genesis 1.1. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created. Create is a righteous word. And the earth became without form and void. That's a picture of Satan moving into our lives, the flesh coming in. That's a picture of us coming to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I'm not saying there's not a real being called Satan. I'm saying he's alive in us in this flesh. Because the flesh was corrupted by him. The dirt was corrupted out of which we were made. This is what's forbidden by God from deceiving the church. Is the flesh. That's what he said, didn't he? That's it. So, Genesis 1-1, this is the picture. He created. Genesis 1-2, darkness. Darkness comes on the face of the deep darkness. We said prison was the division of light and darkness. Darkness is on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moves. Spirit of God. You think that's the same Holy Spirit as the New Testament? The Spirit of God moves upon the face of the waters. And there's some kind of cloud because darkness is on the face of the deep. And the earth was without form and void. And when sin comes into our lives, we go into a state of chaos, chaos, and darkness is on the face of the depths of our hearts, and then God says, I'm commanding you to let the light in. And that's when he writes upon fleshy tables of our heart. He says, let there be light. That's not where he created the light. Let there be light. He created the light in the first verse, didn't he? And then corruption came. And there was a cloud over the earth. Even the scientists say there was a cloud over it. When God says, let there be light, that's a picture of what we're talking about in Colossians 2. That's a picture of circumcision. Let the light in. I'm God. I command it. And he commands to let the light in. And he binds Satan and forbids Satan from deceiving the earth here. And then he begins six work days. Not six days of creation. Six days of working. Making and forming the six days of a potter. You find predestination there. It's, and all this is about God having a family that he's preordained and he does the writing in our hearts. Nobody else does the writing. He does, doesn't he? It's just this picture. Y'all know, know how long I can go on this and just keep all these words and all the subjects I teach tie together. It's Christmas and baptism and tongues and all this all the era of the charismatics and the Baptists and the baptism, the crackers and grape juice. It's just one weaving picture. Huh? It's like a tree of it is. It's just a magnificent picture that comes together and lays together. Now, why preachers can't see this? Well, God don't let them see it. But tell you why they can't see it. They're all preaching, trying to cater to some denomination. If they move outside of their denomination, move outside the boundary line, they say, you're not a part of us anymore. They ostracize you for that. They cut you off. I'm not trying to make any ecclesiastical head happy with me. Nobody. I'm trying to tell the truth. I want you to understand, when I say, when God binds Satan, he binds the strong man, which is us. Boy, self is strong. Self dies real hard. That's the biggest problem in the world is self. That's the only reason people have envy. They have jealousy. They have busybody and they gossip. The only reason you talk about somebody else is you just want to put them down and lift yourself up. Well, if we ever get to a place of understanding that God does it all, and man does nothing. Then we'll get a, we'll start seeing these things. How much time, Mike? I don't know how far I can go. All right, let's go back to Revelation 20. And I keep saying that I'm being more thorough, if you'll notice. I'm going to get more thorough as we go. Trying to really fill out all the ends. I'm not even getting to all the places I could go. 
I'm having to stop myself to keep from going and getting on a trail up here and taking off and going a million miles off in another direction. I'm trying to stay within the parameters of this subject. I want you